We finished Luke 8 last week. I congratulate you for the fact that we are done with one third of the book of Luke. It's 24 chapters and we're done with the first eight. I will read to you the first six verses of Luke chapter 9. It says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither staffs, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. And whoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Again, this is a small transition passage. What we're, what we're seeing in Luke is he'll often give you a long, detailed account of a certain event. And then before he moves to another account, he'll just have these little transition uh, verses where he'll say something like, uh, and Jesus went around preaching. And then he'll go on to the next longer, more detailed story. Or he'll say, and Jesus continued uh, uh, healing and casting out demons and uh, crowds are following him. And then he'll go on to the next longer story. And this is one of those transition passages. It's only six verses, but there's a number of things in it that we could look at. Um, in Matthew chapter 10, we're not going to go there now, in Matthew chapter 10, there's a much fuller account of these verses. Here it's only six. In Mark, again, it's very small. In Matthew, it's practically an entire chapter with all the uh, instructions that Jesus gives his disciples before he sends them off to preach. Now, before we get into, get into it verse by verse, a little bit of the background and the context, How many, question, how many, how long was Jesus' ministry? Do we know? How many years was Jesus' ministry? Do we know? Three years. Three, three, approximately three and a half years, at least that's the generally accepted uh, timeline. Some people say it was two and a half years, some people say it was a year and a half, I seriously doubt that. It was probably about three and a half years. In those three and a half years, actually, let me draw something on the map real quick so that we've got a quick view of Jesus' ministry as a whole. Okay, what's the area up here called? You know it. Jesus has been there for the past eight chapters. Galilee. Galilee up here. Okay. Galilee is up here. What do you call down here? You know it. Judea. Here you go. Whoa! Jew, well, stuff like that. And in the middle is Samaria. There you go. Okay. Now, Jesus' ministry, which was three and a half years, what happened was, you had the first year, he spent it basically down in Judea. But there's very little that we know about that. It's only in the Gospel of John that we read about anything about his first year of ministry. We know very little about his first year of ministry, only from the Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all started off up in Galilee. Alright? So everything we've been seeing in Luke, the first eight chapters, well besides the birth narratives, Jesus is in, up in Galilee preaching. So he spent the first year here in Judea, then he spent about a year and a half preaching all over Galilee. And then the, after that he starts to move down and spends the last year of his uh, earthly life uh, either in Judea or a bit perhaps around the Jordan. Okay? And in, the, in Luke, 
In chapter 9, not too far from where we are right now, it's the big transition in the Gospel of Luke. For the first nine chapters, he's up in Galilee the whole time. But then in Luke 9, 51, it says he sets his face to go to Jerusalem, which is down in Judea, where he is going to be finally put to death. So everything we've seen is in Galilee, but starting in verse about 51 of, verse nine, of chapter 9, it's all around this area where he is not going to go back because he's going to be killed. So, we have Jesus, he's been in Galilee, and soon, this is about the end of his Galilean ministry. He's been there for about a year and a half now. And we've been in the gospel for about a year. <laughs> so he's been up there for about a year and a half now, preaching, and he's had huge crowds following him, but now he's reaching the end of that ministry, and he's about to leave Galilee and not go back. Okay? So what happens, before he leaves... He does this in verse 1. It says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Up until this point, Jesus has been the only one preaching. He's been the only one healing. He's been the only one doing miracles. If you, if you had someone sick, you took him to Jesus. If you needed to ask somebody about God, you took him to Jesus. Everyone is following Jesus. But now, before he leaves, he multiplies his ministry by 12 and sends out his 12 disciples for the first time to do the ministry that he has been doing. Now, they haven't done this before. Okay? The, so far, what, what are the disciples called? They're called Mathites. What is Mathites called? I mean, we, we say disciple in English, but what does Mathites mean? student, a pupil, a learner, okay? So these people, they haven't done any teaching yet. They've just been following Jesus and listening to him, and now Jesus calls them together and he says, okay, now you've got to do it. I don't know if they were expecting that, but they were thrown into it. So, before he does that, he does something very important, something that Olga mentioned. It says, he calls his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over demons and to cure diseases. Vinami ke exousia. See, so far Jesus has been doing all his miracles by his own power. He is the mighty God, as Isaiah chapter 9 says. But now he is having his disciples to go and do this work. They don't have any power of their own to do any of this. They can't cast out demons. How are they supposed to do that? They can't cure diseases. So Jesus gives them his power to go and do it. And that's a... I am reminded of in Acts chapter 3. There's Peter and there's John. And they're, they're going to the temple. And there's a lame man there. And he's asking for money. And Peter says, I don't have any money. But he heals him. And so the man is jumping all around and everyone is just going nuts. They're like, this man who was lame, he's walking and jumping around. And they're shocked at Peter. And Peter turns around and he says, why are you looking at me as though I did something? I didn't do anything. I don't have the power, I don't have the power to heal people. Jesus did this through me. And that's what he's doing here. He's sending out his disciples they can't do anything with their own power. Jesus gives them the power to do it. I did remember one, one, last, one last story, which is just a beautiful story in Daniel. In the book of Daniel, you have Nebuchadnezzar. And he, he has a dream, chapter 2. He has a dream. And he doesn't know what that dream is. Well, he doesn't know what it means. So he goes to his uh, magicians and counselors and all these people and he says I had a crazy dream and I don't know what it means and you need to explain it to me and they say okay tell us the dream and we'll give you the interpretation and he says no he says anyone can give me an interpretation how will I know it's correct I want you to tell me what dream I saw and then explain it to me and they're like this, no one can do that already God knows dreams and he's like, how am I supposed to? If you have divine power, you should be able to tell me what the dream was 
and then explain it to me. And they're like, we can't do it. And he's like, well, what, do I, what do I have you people around here? Why am I paying you? So he's about to kill them. And Daniel, who is in Babylon at that time, hears about this and he sends someone to the king and he says, don't, don't kill anyone. I'll, I'll give the interpretation to the king. So they bring Daniel and they put him in front of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar says, can you interpret dreams? And he says, no. They're like, what? He's like, no. But there is a God and he can and he's revealed it to me. That's the point. We don't have power in and of ourselves unless God gives it to us. And he is sending out these disciples. They don't know how to preach and they definitely don't know how to cast out demons and heal diseases. But Jesus gives them the power to do it. 